Hello and welcome back, Hydraulics. Before we go into details, we have to talk about uh, the, the physical basics. Okay, physics of hydraulics. Yeah? Hydromechanics, this is called. So we're talking about hydromechanics. Hydro mechanics. This hydromechanics can be separated in two parts. Yeah? One part is the hydrostatic. Hydrostatic. And the other part is the hydrodynamic. In these two fields, hydromechanics is divided. Hydrostatic is uh, talking about uh, liquids which are in standstill, not in motion. Okay? They may be pressurized or they are pressurized, but they are not in motion. That's handled by hydrostatic. Yeah? Things which can be described by hydrostatics is, for instance, a cylinder. Yeah? Pist force on the piston, pressure, boom! Hmm? Hydrostatic, not too much in motion. Hydrodynamic, as here we're generating force by pressure and area. Okay? Here in hydrodynamic, the liquid is in motion. Yeah? And the usage of the liquid is mainly not the pressure, but the inertia. Okay? So here we're producing force with velocity and mass. Okay? Things which apply here are, for instance, turbines or pumps or something like this, hydrodynamics. A lot of time we will stay in hydrostatic part. Yeah? Sometimes we also need parts of the hydrodynamic. You will hear a lot of things about this during your mechanics lessons. Yeah? Uh, here in automation technology, we are applying those stuff. Okay? And therefore, I will explain a little bit the, the background or the base rules, let's say. Not, and we, like usual, not go too much into details. Okay? So, what rules are there? Yeah? One rule is the pressure propagation. Pressure propagation. <laughs> Say this hundred times. Pressure propagation, pressure propagation. Pre 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 <laughs> pressure propagation. Druckfort Pflanzung, German. Yeah? Pressure propagation. Fische, 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 Fische. Frische Fische, Fischt, Fischers Fritze. Pressure propagation. Note to myself, don't do this again. <laughs> uh, in German this is called Zungenbrecher, Tongue Breaker. I'm not sure what the English term is. Yeah. Pressure propagation. What is this? Uh, well, if we do have some tank or something where liquid is inside. Huh? Regardless on how this is formed, say it looks like this. And we're looking at the, at the, there's a piston inside. There's a piston inside. And this whole area below the pistons is filled with, with liquid. Okay? And of course, if this is up and this is down, yeah, of course we do have more pressure here than here. Yeah, because there is the density or the mass of the liquid which is producing pressure on this down side here. However, you know, if we are using water, we have one bar in around 10 meters. Yeah? 
a density of 1000 kilos by cubic meter, yeah, we get this. We are dealing in hydraulics, we are dealing with pressures which can go up to 1000 or even higher. Some hundred bars are usual. So if my hydraulic system has a height of, I don't know, let's call it 10 meters, the density of oil is even a little bit lower than water, then we have here, let's say we have here one bar more. Yeah? Then we don't have 200 bars with 201. Hey, I mean, we're not taking this into account, right? This would maybe be an overkill. So we are not taking into account the, the density for us everywhere in this liquid because it's that high is the same pressure. So here we have the pressure one on this side. On this side we have the pressure 2 and pressure propagation law means that in a combined thing everywhere is the same pressure. Okay? The pressure from here is propagating to here. Yeah? Everywhere inside the liquid is the same pressure. Hydrostatically. Hydrostatically. If there's movement, it looks a little bit, little bit different. Pressure propagation. One base law of hydraulics. Okay. Second base law or second thing we have to take into account is the force ratio. Okay. Force ratio. Kraftübersetzung. German. Force ratio. Let's say we have here piston one. There is an area A1. Yeah. Piston two has the area. A2. There's a pressure, F1. Ah, there's a force, not the, not the pressure. There's the force, F2. Okay. What is pressure? Pressure is force divided by area. Newton by square meter. So this means pressure 1. Pressure 1 is the same as F1 divided by A1 huh? and pressure 2 is F2 divided by A2 huh? and since the pressure propagation law is in place these two are equal. Okay? This means F1 divided by F2 the ratio of those two forces equals the ratio of the two areas. Yeah. It's pretty clear. Yeah. If I have a big area here, I have a big force because the pressure is the same. Yeah. If I have a small area here, I have a small force because the pressure is the same. Force ratio. Yeah. Force ratio. Then there is the distance ratio. Distance ratio. Which color do I make? Maybe I use the brown one. Distance ratio. Wegübersetzung. Let's say I move this piston down to here. Now I've moved here piston 1 by away S1. Pushed it down simply. Okay. What I've changed is this volume here. This volume I have put here. Yeah? So since I cannot I cannot uh, reduce the volume of my liquid because it's liquid, yeah? this volume has to go, go, go somewhere. Yeah? This volume has to go somewhere and this piston here is moving up, of course. 
here is the new piston position. Here this moved a different way, S2. Yeah. However, the volume here V2 they are the same. Okay? They are the same. So let's calculate the volume. So the volume one equals area one multiplied by the movement yeah? and the volume two is area two multiplied by the movement and those two are equal. Yeah? This means movement one divided by movement two is and now we have exactly the other way around a2 divided by a1 okay this means if i apply a force to put this down i apply a small force okay and i moved it down i can move pretty i have to move pretty far down yeah? because here is a big area this will move not that far yeah? However, with a big, big force. This means, you see, uh, the work is the same. Kraft mal weg. Force multiplied by movement must be the same. Yeah? And this is, this is what is usually used. Yeah? Here, at this piston, maybe, there is a, there's a whole car sitting. Very modern looking car here. Yeah. Decent. Uh, I would buy it. I would buy it. The Fuchsschwanz. Headlights. And indicator light. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole car. And here I can simply lift this car by applying here with a small there's a human uh, pushing down here uh, and he didn't, does not need to be an adult uh, it's just a regular guy with strange hairs uh, ears but he's happy <laughs> yeah. this is he can press it down with his hand boot, and lift the car However, he has to go very, very far down yeah, to lift the car a little bit. Distance ratio. Distance ratio, Wegübersetzung. This is very often used in hydraulics. And then we have a thing which is called pressure ratio. Pressure ratio. Druckübersetzung. Let's imagine the following, the following situation. Yeah. There is a chamber, yeah, and there is a, a seal or something like this, and there is a chamber, smaller chamber. Here we are connected to the pressure system. Yeah. Here is a piston inside. Here's a piston inside. And those two pistons are connected to each other. This is piston one, this is area one, this is piston two, this is area two. Here is a liquid. We have a pressure one, there is liquid. And here is also liquid, here we have pressure too. Here we have force 1. And here we have force 2. Since those two things are mechanically bound together, 
if there is nothing moving, this means that total forces must limit or must must of him must get we must get reach zero. This means our forces here is F1 equals F2. Okay? Simply because it's connected. If we want to have this in standstill, watch it uh, from a static way, yeah, then all forces needs to be in some zero. This is what is telling. And F1 is still the same as, as here. Yeah? So F1 is pressure 1 multiplied by A1. Yeah? This is F1. And pressure 2 multiplied by A2 is pressure 2. This is the same. Yeah? So this means P1 divided by P2 equals yeah, uh, A2 divided by A1. What does this mean? This means if I have a certain pressure here, yeah, this pressure is working on a big area producing a force and here this pressure must be higher to have the same force on the smaller on the smaller area. Okay. So who builds this? Yeah. I can transfer pressure from a small pressure system to a high pressure system. Okay. Yeah. However, the usable volume is not that high. But we end up in a situation maybe yeah, where this is really important for us. If we do have a cylinder, yeah, the cylinder, and it's double acting, this means on both sides we do have liquid. Yeah. However, on one side I have the rod, on the other side I do not have the rod. So here I have an area A1 and here I have an area A2. Yeah. Here are the connectors of the cylinder. Yeah. So if this is blocked somehow here, back for whatever reason, yeah, and I put full system pressure on this side, yeah, then the system pressure here is exceeding the maximum system pressure because of this pressure ratio. Okay. For this, maybe we have to take care about this. We have to think about this. Yeah, that just because I apply here, I don't know, 160 bars, does not mean everywhere in my system is 160 bars. It can be here, can be more. Yeah. Simply because of the area ratio. Pressure ratio. So that's 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 what things we are using. Yeah? Pressure propagation, force ratio, distance ratio, and pressure ratio. We have to take care about this stuff. Yeah. These are the hydrostatic things. Next time we are going to talk about hydrodynamics. Yeah. Because, you know, this oil is not just there, or this liquid is not just there. We had to go there. Yeah. And therefore we have a flow. Yeah. Next time we are talking about the flow. Yeah. For this video, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.